Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us um, for the online Minerals to Metals Forum hosted by the Southern African Institute for Mining and Metallurgy. Before we get started, I just have some quick housekeeping. Um, during the discussion, please either type your question in the Q&A section below or after the discussion during the Q&A session, you can raise your hand and unmute and speak to the group. Um, please note that the forum is recorded and will be made available to the public. If you do not want to be seen or heard, but want to participate, please note that you can make yourself anonymous by changing your name and leaving your question in the chat. If you have any issues or would like to be added to the mailing list, please send me a private message in the chat. Today's topic is the approaches to leveraging mining related infrastructure investments for social development after the COVID-19 pandemic. Today we are joined by Christine, uh, Christian Lukuza, who is one of the leading mining legal practitioners in the DRC and the founding partner of Momentum Attorneys and Advisors. We also have with us Robert Batumba, who is a civil engineer and the country director for the RCS Global. I would like to invite Christian to turn on his video. Um, I think we might have a problem with that, but otherwise you can just go ahead and start with your presentation if you need to share anything. Hello, Asia. So we'll be, um, we'll be uh, this is a, a really an amazing opportunity and thank you uh, very much for at uh, UCT and um, uh, Professor Henry Mopster for the opportunity. Uh, it's, it's very important subjects uh, regarding what's going on in the DRC. And uh, we'll be uh, uh, sharing the panel as well as with uh, Professor Jaziel Kere. So what we want to do is uh, starting with uh, Professor Jaziel Kere, who's going to go through all the geolog geological studies and showing uh, the potential and magnitude of opportunity into the DRC. And then uh, Robert, uh, we, we follow and I'll, I'll be the last one to, to speak. Unfortunately, I don't see Giselle on the call right now, so I thought I would introduce him once he joins us, but in the interim, would we be able to proceed with Robert then? Yeah. Hello, Aisha. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Robert. As Aisha said, yeah, I'm a country director of RCS Global. We more in the due diligence of uh, export and production of uh, mineral in DRC. Uh, I'm also a former uh, UCT student. I completed my MBA with uh, the Graduate School of Business, but uh, I have also a background of uh, mining engineer uh, back in DRC and the supply chain with uh, MIT in the United States. Yeah, uh, I wanted to just to share. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I, it would be better if uh, Jaja had started, but yeah, uh, uh, it will give the different opportunities that are in DRC, but uh, I will go through and present the main uh, the main opportunities uh, currently in uh, DRC. Let me open my slide. Uh, DRC have, whole, have uh, a lot of uh, mining all bodies all over the country and the main one uh, being the South Kivu uh, with copper and cobalt. Uh, you know, the 
copper belt, uh, as they call it, that goes from DRC to Zambia. But there are a lot of uh, copper uh, ore bodies also in the east part, uh, in Tanganyika, uh, going from Puerto to the Tanganyika Lake, and also in Bukavu, with uh, a big uh, ore deposit in Kaziba. And it is also believed that there is a big, big ore body in the rainforest in Ituri province. Uh, but uh, it is it hasn't been explored because this is a preserved area. But there are also a lot of uh, lithium, uh, a big lithium deposit uh, that uh, AVZ is considering uh, exploiting in uh, uh, Manono area, Tanganyika province. This is the southeast. A lot of Kasterat uh, industrial production in the North Kivu with uh, ABM. But uh, Coltan, Wolframite also deposit all over the east part of DRC. There's gold in Uturi with Ibali gold, uh, uh, Barik gold, uh, in OULA, South Kivu, North Kivu, Manema, uh, industrial production of gold in uh, South Kivu, uh, with Twangiza, and in North, uh, in Manema with uh, Namoya. Uh, uh, that is, was operated by Banro. We've just learned that uh, they've, been, uh, they've been taken by uh, a new company. There was a big opportunity of aluminum development in the east part, in western part of DRC with BHP, uh, aluminum in Congo Central, and also diamond in Kasai, Bandundu, and the north of DRC. Kisenge Mangane, so that was an uh, industrial mine the south of DRC. So you see that uh, with all the potential that we have in the mining industry, uh, there, there are a lot of opportunities. But uh, the issue here is that uh, most of the minerals are produced and uh, exported as bulk mineral, except uh, for the copper and cobalt. Copper is, sell, is sold as uh, uh, copper cathodes mainly, and cobalt as a cobalt hydroxide. So there is an opportunity to add value by transforming all those minerals uh, locally and uh, so that it can benefit uh, local population. In the past, copper was transformed uh, locally, even if it was at a smaller scale with Latrica, uh, transforming copper into uh, cup, uh, copper wires and so on, but uh, since then, uh, since uh, the 1990s, it has been closed down. So a lot of opportunities in that uh, area. Transformation lithium, uh, uh, it's a, a mineral that is have been really sought lately for uh, batteries, uh, but uh, there is a deposit uh, that can be the largest deposit in Africa, uh, one of the biggest in the world, uh, that uh, AVZ is, AVZ, an Australian company, is developing uh, around Manono. Uh, Kasserat, ABM, uh, trying to develop also, but uh, planning to export as concentrate, 70% concentrate. So uh, opportunity cost for the DRC. Gold, uh, lightly uh, refined but uh, and uh, salt, but not really uh, really tra uh, transform into jewelry for local uh, consumption. A lot of jewelry uh, uh, being imported from Europe and from India. Uh, diamonds, almost all the production is exported. In fact, I had uh, a comparison between production and expo uh, export of different mineral, uh, and you can see that almost all the mineral is exported. So uh, the the challenges uh, run now. The main challenges uh, will be the business climate. Uh, with uh, the change. Uh, of course, whenever there is a challenge, there may also be an opportunity. But uh, yeah, 
uh, we still need, the government still needs to do a lot. Uh, and I think uh, Christian will cover it uh, in much details afterwards. Yeah. Um, the mining code, the change in the mining code in 2018 uh, showed us uh, that uh, there was no really a guarantee to investors uh, for, uh, regarding the tax collection. Uh, a lot of investors, of course, some of them were cheating, uh, declaring uh, uh, that uh, they had uh, more expenses than they did, uh, and it was very difficult for the government to assess uh, the accuracy. And then for years, they, they declared that they were still investing and couldn't pay tax. So with the 2018 uh, money court um, the, were hit by the increase in tax and uh, many of, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, seven companies decided just to withdraw from the uh, companies union uh, called uh, FEC and then uh, to kind of uh, be regrouped in order to challenge the government. Yeah, But uh, the improvement uh, of uh, re registration of company uh, the, is still paper based, but uh, now at least you can re register a company in uh, less than a month. On the legislation part, uh, as you know, a lot of corruption, but uh, the recent trial uh, of the chief of staff of the president uh, show us that uh, yeah, uh, things are moving on the pos positive side. Uh, fruits and smuggling of mineral over the borders is still a challenge uh, because of the poor border controls uh, all over the country, but especially in the East Part, uh, with uh, all the militia uh, operating in the eastern part of DRC. There's no uh, state agency presence on mining, and especially in the East Part, where a lot of uh, mining activity are uh, mainly artisanal. Uh, export taxes uh, in the DRC are considered to be higher than in the neighboring uh, country uh, that is uh, bringing a lot of uh, producers in DRC to export and benefit uh, to smuggle and benefit from the lower export taxes in neighboring countries. Refineries, uh, a lot of refineries have been installed uh, in the neighboring countries, starting from Uganda with gold refineries, Rwanda, Tantalum, and gold refineries, Tanzania. Just to give you an example, uh, the, the main issue is uh, with artisanal mining, uh, smuggling uh, uh, artisanal mining product. Because with industrial, of course, these are big companies and the uh, state are uh, following it uh, closely, uh, monitoring production and export. But for artisanal mining, uh, just to give you an example, in 2019, the gold production was uh, officially, the official numbers was, uh, uh, it was uh, 333 kilogram of gold but the export amounted just to uh, 99 kilogram. So approximately uh, 300 kilogram that disappeared in, in the nature, yeah. And during the same period, I don't know if you came across the UN expert report of this year, uh, the experts estimated that uh, 1,100 kilogram was produced just by uh, the Ituri uh, province. This is uh, just one province that produced uh, 1,100, yeah. And uh, the official uh, figure is still uh, a third of that amount. And Ituri, of course, is, uh, produces a lot of gold, but they still, Owele will produce almost the same amount. And there's still uh, South Kivu, Walikale, North Kivu, in uh, Walikale, and uh, a lot of gold coming from uh, Manima. So a lot of gold uh, being smuggled. 
And there is uh, the OECD uh, that issued a report in 2015 that estimated that between 10 to 15 tons of gold uh, artisanally produced is, uh, per year. the DRC produced 10 to 15 tons uh, of gold per year. So this is approximately 8, uh, million of tax. Uh, an opportunity cost for tax, uh, but uh, also these artisanal gold could be uh, refined locally and added value locally and transform into jewelry for export and so on. So these are opportunities and challenges that the country is facing. And uh, I think, I believe that with all the money that could be generated, there are opportunity to invest in more uh, uh, diverse industry. As the, as the uh, COVID-19 have shown us is that uh, we need uh, somehow to rely on in-country uh, transformation, in-country in production, in order uh, to uh, satisfy the local demand. Uh, with all the disruption in logistics for entrant and uh, export, uh, we believe that uh, if uh, locally people could produce, uh, it can be crops and transform it into food and so on, processed food, uh, the country will benefit a lot from it. Uh, but uh, one of the biggest challenge uh, is the energy. The DRC have one of the biggest potential uh, of energy in the world. And uh, the good thing is that uh, what is being considered is mainly uh, green energy with hyd hydro dam. Uh, there were some uh, experiments of uh, 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 production of energy with uh, uh, coal in Luena mainly, but uh, the project uh, was uh, uh, canceled because of all the pollution. So. What is produced mainly in DRC, it's uh, green energy with hydro dams, but there's still a lot of potential for uh, wind energy in the east and in the south, but also uh, uh, energy from gas uh, with the Lake Kivu. Uh, uh, in Lake Kivu, uh, on the Rwandan side, they have started already to produce uh, energy with the gas coming from the Lake Kivu, and, but uh, on the Congo side, uh, not yet. Uh, currently, it is estimated that the potential is uh, 10,000 uh, 10, megawatts that could be produced, but uh, currently installed is um, 2,700, uh, with uh, mainly Inga 1, uh, 351 uh, megawatt installed and Inga 2, uh, 124 uh, megawatt that were installed. Uh, there's also Zongo, uh, Hydro Dam, Madingusha in the staff of DRC in Zillow, but also private uh, initiative like the Hydro Dam in Ruchuru, but it's a small one. And Kibali have uh, also started implemented a project that is, should be a kind of a model, especially for the mining industry. As you know, Kibali Gold is a mining company, but since there were no uh, electricity lines in the north uh, east, so they put in place three uh, three hydro dams that are backed by. Uh, 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 batteries and the generator. So uh, the current uh, installation is, um, uh, yeah, I will come later to it, but uh, it, uh, the current capacity uh, for the Kibali, uh, we have. Uh, Hydro dam with uh, 22, and it is called Zoro, 
and the, these are micro central as we call it, uh, Ambara 10 megawatt and Azambi 10, so approximately 42 uh, megawatt with uh, three gen set backup energy and five megawatt of battery uh, just to stabilize. Yeah. So this is what is installed in Kibali. Yeah. And there's also some projects uh, in, uh, in the south uh, with chair solar that have started already, uh, the feasibility that have been approved uh, uh, during now MOU and PPA. Uh, the projects aim to have 500 uh, megawatts. Sorry, uh, the, the, there's a typo there. Uh, megawatts, 500 megawatts of solar energy. There's also the Tembo power that will have 66 megawatts uh, hydro uh, with a backup of uh, 30 megawatts solar. Uh, these are private, JR Solar, Tembo Power Energy. These are power uh, private uh, business. Uh, as you know, since 2014, in June 2014, um, now they have decentralized uh, 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 production of electricity. There's also uh, the project of 4,000 uh, Inga 3 that should provide 4,600 uh, megawatts. But uh, it's still a project, uh, feasibility studies um, ongoing, but uh, the main thing will be how to fund um, the, all the money. But uh, Inga 3 will be on the long run because it will take 10 to 15 years um, to complete the project. Yeah. So a lot of potential, but uh, uh, an average 80, uh, 800 to 900 megawatt shortage compared to uh, the current demand of electricity that is estimated to uh, around uh, uh, four, uh, three, three thousand megawatts to four thousand. Yeah. So these are the main challenging uh, challenges that the country is facing, and we believe that uh, it, there are also opportunities, especially in the power sector, to invest in um, green energy, and uh, this will have immediate effect on transforming, uh, for instance, uh, the, the crop, uh, also uh, uh, building on um, the manufacturing uh, of uh, entrant in the mining industry. Yeah. In the past, a lot of sulfuric acid, for instance, was produced in DRC, but now it is being imported. A lot of cement uh, was produced in locally, but now the main, uh, quantity is being imported. So I will stop by there and hopefully we have time to answer to some questions uh, as we move forward. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, I don't think we're going to have Giselle join us today, but um, next we'll have Christian speaking. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Robert, for your nice presentation. And uh, again, thank you to UCT and Professor Henry and all the team for the support and the help uh, on uh, allowing us to present such an uh, uh, important subject. And it's part of uh, the subject in law that I love the most, which is allowing using law as a tool to actually help to develop uh, implementation of governor, good governance and development of uh, a, a country like uh, the DRC. So going back on a couple of information, recent information on the de development of business in the DRC, Jesse uh, was supposed to show us some, a couple of tables and numbers on a huge and massive opportunity into the DRC. Uh, I will come up with uh, some numbers on hydropower side because I've been uh, 
um, uh, we, 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 we've been the, 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 the law firm advising the Congolese government on the drafting of the second uh, legislation and the design of tariff and methodology of uh, and even template of PPA, power purchase agreement, uh, etc. But where, where are we right now in a DRC? What are we missing in the DRC? What's really going on? Uh, we, we've seen numbers and scholar writing on the DRC explaining how a beautiful country you would see, for instance, we have we are the only country to have uh, uh, a monkey called Bonobo. So Bonobo is a very close to human being um, and uh, they can die with uh, lack of love, etc. So it's, it's a really an amazing country in terms of tourism, in terms of uh, all massive opportunity. But what is really missing in the DRC? Uh, why are we thinking that actually uh, COVID and unprecedented time at really the key moment for actually um, use it as all the pain that all the country or the people of the DRC that went through. You, you should know actually DRC, we still have a war in a part of the DRC in the east of Congo. We are going through uh, again with uh, having two, the fifth, uh, 13 case of Ebola uh, what the world is experiencing actually in the, uh, uh, around the world, DRC is living as a normal way. We have uh, malaria, we have different things, but surrounding by potentially huge opportunity. So this is where as, as a law firm, we've been thinking that, okay, we have uh, the public sector, we have the civil society and we have the private sector. How can we use law uh, as a tool actually to, to push the way the country need to address issues of uh, uh, risks in terms of minerals, in terms of uh, things. So, and then we've been thinking, pushing and proposing actually uh, a law at the parliament on the mineral beneficiation. So uh, at the front of uh, our, our country, nation, Patrice Emery Lumonda, the day he was about to be killed, he, he, he just thought that the last thing he could do is just writing a letter to his wife, a beautiful letter, where he was just saying that the future of Africa is bright. So as a Congolese, we're still asking ourselves, what should we do? What, how can you use the best in terms of international best practice to help mother, uh, children, and the lot of people they are going through a facing a massive, you know, issues in terms of human rights, etc. So we have the potential. What, but how can you use different laws? So I'm going to just focus on three things. So as we said, we are keen actually. We, we are drafting. We've been doing some research. Uh, actually to make a proposal at the parliament in the DRC in terms of mineral beneficiation. So we shouldn't have just all the raw material going out of the DRC, but we should be using it and doing transformation toward a manufacturing industry in the country. But the gap actually in order to achieve or going to agriculture or manufacture, we need actually electricity. And uh, I was, as I was saying, I was lucky enough to be working with uh, DFI, you said the UNDP, and uh, we went to a pro program uh, and we found out actually DRC has 780 uh, hydropower potential, you know, divided into 26 provinces. So we can actually sell electricity all over the country. The huge dam Inga uh, alone, it's uh, almost 100 megawatts in terms of potential of electricity. I've been involved in a, another study with uh, the Berkeley University where we, uh, um, we found out actually that in terms of solar and wind, TRC has a more potential uh, you know, uh, just we can just forget about Inga. So the, the ingredient we need to use, we need to use all the pain 
going through COVID. So the meaning of COVID in DRC is different. We have 90% of people are not living, you know, in normal house. They are being, living outside. So when you say you are in lockdown, so people actually are outside. It's their normal life. How are they going? So we need exceptional leadership in, in the DRC. So we've seen some interesting things. For instance, uh, the chief of cabinet of the president, it's a land case, landmark case, uh, been involved in a huge case of uh, 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 public procurement, and uh, they were talking about $50 million. And the president actually allowed all the process to go through. And now the case, uh, the, the, the last judgment, it's 20 years of uh, prison, etc. So we've seen interesting things, for instance, Tesla, who, who is in the uh, car in industry, uh, they will be buying 6,000 6, uh, cobalt from Glencore, one of the major companies in the DRC. So we've seen also the government coming up with a set of uh, different uh, documents. They want uh, the 80 uh, uh, new regulations to improve uh, the claim of investment. So they need to change the narrative, the, the way they need uh, to, to, to explain to investors how uh, attractive is, uh, is the DRC and why you can you need to come in the DRC and to invest in the DRC. So having a clear mineral beneficiation uh, policies based on actually a, a study uh, made already by the SADC region and different, uh, different scholars, uh, actually the country can use it to start uh, actually um, that will massively create uh, jobs in, uh, in the DRC. At international level, that leadership of the president may help actually, why not uh, engaging with uh, Tesla and, and, uh, and discussing about uh, mega factory and different things they can be doing the DRC. But what is very interesting in the short term, actually DRC can do, uh, a lot of mining company, they are going into production. By going into production, it means that uh, we, we set up in the mining code what we call royalties. So after selling your, your raw material and pro product outside of your country, you need to come back and uh, you, you have to lend 20% of the money you'll be recovering from the sale in order to develop the, the local community. So we've seen, for instance, uh, different uh, provinces and different local community having suddenly two million US dollars, three million US dollars in time of COVID. It's really unbelievable and nothing never happened. But how can, you, can we help such you know, community using suddenly two million and what are, are they going to do? So they need to think business, they need to, be, to think commercial, if, for instance, they are using just money and going and building up some road, et cetera, uh, we don't any, any more to have uh, money. So some companies we've seen in best international practice, some uh, you know, provinces, for instance, the province of Lualaba having almost uh, 13 billion US dollars in terms of assets developed by different mining companies. So what they can do, for instance, Lualaba can set up a new investment company, a local one, a local one can use the new PP law um, promulgated in 2018 and put some money into different projects. For instance, putting 30% uh, of the investment in terms of project finance for a road development for electricity and for ICT. And by putting such much money in a transparent way, doing a tender, public tender, and calling investors, investor coming through the, the you know the structure and pushing additional money, and uh, you, you you know, and they may invest in different, having a return of investment uh, after two years, after one year, after three years, they can put different refinery for gold. 
actually we have more gold in the DFC right now because of the the, the lack of uh, you know transaction in between different country and as you know we have the African trade agreement which was supposed to to come into uh, effect uh, on in July and it been delayed for the the first uh, I think that probably January 2001 2021. So there will be more interaction in terms of business and trading. So they need to think it that way. They be receiving money. And what is really amazing, it's the amendment of the mining law in 2018. Uh, apart the 25% which is still allocated to, uh, to the project affected by the mining, uh, by the mining project, there is a 0 0.3 on the turnover that have been in introducing within that uh, piece of legislation. So it's massive, it's almost like equity. So we have the local community is part of, or it's part of, of, of the company as equity. So it meaning that we will see massive money, a lot of money going to different local community, but we need to actually to build a capacity. We need to help the using the law showing share use for instance tools using ppp to close gap in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, how they they'll be developing so i've been thinking about two things two important things so in order for the drc uh, that will be the kick core for the development it's electricity and ict so by using electricity uh, for instance very small and medium hydropower, uh, for instance, use it 1,000 to 10,000 US dollars in all 25, 26 provinces. That will help actually to set up a local and in small way, a, a local entity. And even in the, that small entity, things like data center, and the, then you will have a, a tower, tower company coming and uh, uh, putting some money, developing. I'm a former director of uh, a Tawako company. I know, for instance, right now in the DRC, we have 2,500 tower, towers company. There is a backbone that they've been built, you know, in the DRC. And the great news is recently MTN and different operator, they are lending a cable coming from Europe to Africa, and they are planning on 2021 and 2022 to have the fattest internet in Africa. So we have, for instance, uh, with IDB, we have uh, IFDB, we have, uh, we have a fund to help different countries uh, uh, to have free internet and how to develop. So just think about e-government. If they have all 25 provinces and we have wealthy provinces using uh, investment fund, going to put some money in different other provinces and in order to leverage you know, the infrastructure we need for ICT, it means that in true e-government, the country will know how to recover different taxes and will be connected you know, all the, around the countries. And someone can set up a company growing to a website in a very remote located place. So electricity, ICT, it's actually the, the first step how we, we can develop. Where the money is coming from, do we have money? Actually, we have more money than we, we may be thinking. For instance, we, in 2015, we improved our legislation in insurance law. So there are a lot of premium and a lot of money sitting without, without being used. So South Africa and the real estate in South Africa, it's hold mutual, it's insurance company, et cetera, et cetera. So they are money, they are pension fund. Actually they can use, you know, that money, 80% of mining industry, they are listed in stock venture in, in Toronto. So these are pension funds used by our good friend, old man in, uh, in Canada. So money is there, we have the royalty, which has been, you know, lending to different local community. So we have actually money. We have a lot of incentive coming from IFDP. We have one billion US dollar that have been allocated to the DRC last week by the World Bank for free education. 
we have 600 million US dollars coming from the World Bank and MIF. So it's huge and massive leadership for unprecedented time that they may be using. So a lot of countries are experiencing what TRC they've been going through uh, a lot of time. Uh, it's normal in TRC to have malaria, to be sick, people are dying for nothing, a, a, you know, not good quality of... Uh, so we, we thought that we, be, we may use this opportunity actually to, to, to kick off even the narrative, the, the debate at the parliament, showing that, yes, we have the potential, yes, we have everything, we've been blessed, uh, even having a, a, a monkey. And one of the most fascinating things about the Bonobo, you, you may Google it, they are not fighting. So uh, they are not doing well, they are not fighting. They are making peace by having sex, but we are not going to do that. But at least we have some, <laughs> we are learning a few things from uh, such an amazing, uh, you, you know. Uh, so that's why we, we've been thinking uh, with such an opportunity, we say, okay, let's use the law uh, in different piece of legislation. Uh, to create a debate at the parliament level. I've been discussing all the day today with the chairman of the Chamber of Mine in the DRC. He's very excited. They are going to set up a sort of committee with the office of the president and going through and talking to the president. Okay, this is the momentum. We have the African trade agreement, different, uh, we'll be entering the East African markets in uh, you know, Kenya, et cetera. So there are a lot of chemistry going on in, the, in Africa, actually. And DRC, is leadership, can use PPP as a tool, actually, to leverage in terms of how we develop infra infrastructure using different mining companies. YLC and the 0.3% coming from mining can help, actually, different uh, local communities affected by different mining uh, uh, projects to build up a very strong uh, infrastructure and uh, different assets. And uh, by doing that way, actually DRC will emerge as uh, described in different uh, books and different uh, thoughts by scholar that one of the countries to watch in terms of, uh, term of development. Thank you so much, Christian. That was um, quite inspiring, and I, at least coming from from an L, yeah, studying an LLB that is tapping into like these sources of income for development is definitely an interesting area to explore. Um, we have some questions that we just need to run through before we close. Um, this one is from the Elongo Elise Ishiloke. Good afternoon, guys. A great theme indeed. Why is the DRC failing to observe the new mining code and the policies that meant to develop beneficiation infrastructure in the country so as to limit the excessive export of raw materials? So it seems the government wants one thing and does the opposite. Can we have um, a sh short kind of input from, from both of the panelists? Okay. So uh, one of the, the things uh, actually um, um, it's um, uh, the issue of uh, uh, lack of uh, good governance and uh, corruption issues. The scale of uh, of corruption in the in the DRC, uh, it's uh, it's really unprecedented. And uh, again, it's only leadership. I was involved in two thousand and seven in what they call the review of uh, uh, sixty two mining contract. So the idea was going through and back and trying to renegotiate, but uh, mining company, you know. Uh, are going through a very difficult time because sometimes people are doing 
uh, giving kickback on, you know, giving money in order to have uh, access to license or different benefits or tax incentive, etc. And it's very difficult actually to disclose it, to say, oh, okay, uh, this one received this uh, kind of money and we, we, we won't do business. So it's a very attractive business uh, country in terms of uh, opportunities, but it's also tough uh, to do business. So again, it's, um, it, 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 uh, that was a lack of leadership and implementation of uh, different uh, regulation uh, in place. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I know that that's that's pretty much the the scar that we all in 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 every African country, in most African countries that are based on extractive industries. That's the that's the core issue: is institutional strength. Um, yeah. Robert, would you like to? <clears throat> sorry, Robert, would you like to weigh in? Robert, are you still there with us? Maybe not. Hello, there can you hear me? Hi, yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I, I have an issue with my, <laughs> my Wi-Fi. Yeah, I guess uh, I was using the Wi-Fi in the house, in the house, and then yeah, probably kids are uh, overusing it right now. So I needed to shift to my. Uh, mobile data. Yeah, uh, can you repeat the question, please? So I, I, I'm afraid that I lost you for a while. Not a problem. Um, why yeah. is the DRC failing to observe the new mining code and the policies that are meant to develop beneficiation infrastructure? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think I also saw a question like that. Uh, uh, the, I think one of the things is that uh, in DRC we have a lot of generally beautiful text, uh, but uh, the implementation is a problem because of uh, the vision from the leadership vision, but uh, also a, a systemic uh, corruption and also uh, uh, especially on the political side of things, there's no proper implementation on, um, the, of the mining code. And as you know, generally the political decision are taken in Kinshasa, that is uh, 2,000 kilometers from the south where uh, many mining activities are taking place and also 2,000 from the east. So, uh, uh, there is a distance between those who are working on the ground and those who are taking decision in Kinshasa, and not so much uh, uh, discussion between the, uh, those who are involved in the sector and the decision makers. So it ends up with people in uh, Kinshasa being corrupted, uh, taking uh, non-advised decision, and it's a bit uh, challenging. But uh, things are moving a little bit, uh, especially uh, now with the fir very first transition, uh, political transition uh, at the um, head of state position uh, that took place uh, last year. So we, we are hopeful that uh, in the years to come, uh, things uh, may change. Yeah. But it is a step in the good direction with uh, what is happening especially in Luanaba, where uh, there is money being given to local communities. Uh, initially, it, all the money uh, was, uh, were, uh, the tax return and everything were given in Kinshasa, but now it has been decentralized and uh, local communities can benefit from uh, the uh, the money generated by mining activity. Yeah. So it's a step in the good direction. Yeah. Um, this question is directed to you, Robert. Um, not only do we need visionary leadership, we need above all stable institutions. So it touches on our previous comments. 
Um, the volatility in the political arena has been a disturbance to the economic fabric of the DRC for decades. Would you agree with this statement, I suppose? Would you? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. In fact, I was <laughs> answering to the question in the writing. Yeah, uh, stability, uh, uh, there are two levels of stability that need to be considered here. Uh, the international, uh, with our, especially with our neighbors, uh, neighboring countries, uh, but also the internal stability. Yeah. Internal stability, as I mentioned, we on the right path, uh, I hope so, uh, but uh, we still need to see uh, the second transition, uh, handover uh, of uh, uh, president's uh, position. Uh, maybe it will happen as in Nigeria, where after two or three uh, political transition, finally the country kind of stabilized. Yeah, uh, in, internally we have a lot of hope. Uh, because it has been a long way since uh, 1960, uh, it's always a coup to take power. But uh, what is also important to notice is that uh, a lot of multinational companies are benefiting, in fact, from the instability, especially in the map. All the decisions that were taken in um, 2000. Uh, then uh, with the Dodd-Frank law in the United States. It is because people realized that uh, the instability in the East was mainly due to all the benefits that uh, people were taking out of money trade. I uh, mentioned earlier on, uh, it just in Italy, it is believed that uh, we have uh, 1,100 um, uh, gold production. But what is officially exported out of DSE, 30, uh, 39 kilograms. So it's billion of dollars that uh, are being smuggled. This is just for artisanal money. Yeah. So those who are benefiting from the trade, illegal trade of mineral, will not like to have a peace in the Eastern DRC. This is where we have instability. You can finance uh, rebels. Uh, I remember a provincial minister told me once that, uh, yeah, we have minerals in DRC, but we are not manufacturing um, guns. Uh, we are not manufacturing uh, dollars in DRC. So the money is coming from somewhere. The uh, guns are coming from somewhere. Uh, unless uh, the international community address that issue, uh, we will never have peace. Uh, take a lot of efforts internally to have peace in the air. But uh, we need uh, absolutely to have also international support on that regard, yeah. Uh, can I put some word there? Uh, I, I, st I, strong, I strongly believe that uh, uh, as I was saying, unprecedented time needs uh, high-level uh, leadership. And we may have the best law, we may have a um, uh, strong institution, but this, there is lack of leadership on uh, how we, we need actually to move on. Uh, I've just two ex uh, three examples. We have, uh, for instance, um, uh, we have China. Um, We'd be surprised to know that China has the, the, the richest village in the world. It's a communist country, but it's one of the most capitalist uh, 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 village. So in terms of equity, uh, the lowest shareholder as a member of the village has uh, 200,000 US dollars. So when you are going there, you may be thinking, looking at the village, actually you, think you will be finding big building, et cetera. Just a leadership a guy, not uh, having an MBA or a degree, but a vision, and he leads such community on the best quality of life. Uh, you have Abuja, a young uh, lawyer, uh, 38 years old. He was thinking that, okay, I will make 
another place much bigger, much better than Lagos. And he did it in Abuja. Today you can see Abuja as it is, as, as one of the biggest camps. We, we have uh, the, the landmark case in, in South Africa with uh, that uh, un unprecedented and uh, you know, beautiful decision from the president of the Conf Court in uh, the Kandla case. So let's think about if that was uh, another decision, you know, uh, you know in that, uh, that case. I think leadership has a massive impact on the way uh, we should implement um, the law, how we can use it to develop uh, our people, how we can interact and, you know, help people to trade. We are not interested in politics. We want to do business. We want the best for uh, ourselves, you know, good education. We, we want everything. I stop even, you know, laughing when we are going in Congo with someone not knowing to speak French or someone, you know, going, you know, difficulties with women being raped in the east of Congo. So you start, you stop laughing and you can just, you know, imagine what, uh, you know, they are going through. But leadership, someone leading the people in the right direction, that will be massive in terms of, you may see just that last case with the chief of cabinet. You know, all over the country, they've been watching it. They've been commenting on Twitter. So yes, we need strong leadership in unprecedented time for our people, for women, children, etc. All of us, we want the best quality of life. So we can use minerals, we can use all the potential we have actually for the best of uh, the country. I have a question here that kind of touches on what you're speaking about and maybe you can weigh in a little bit here is, um, Harris sp speaks about human resources being the key and whether you could run us through what you regard as the best institutes in the country for technical training. Yes, yeah. uh, maybe. Oh, yes, okay. go ahead. <laughs> okay, maybe I will start and then Christian will help me. Yeah, uh, uh, there, there have been a lot of change in that um, uh, regard. Uh, at, in the 1980s, in fact, there were the best uh, technical schools uh, at uh, secondary um, high school, as you call it here. Um, in the south of uh, DRC. Uh, there were renowned uh, schools like uh, Motoshi, uh, which have given a lot of uh, business uh, managers in the south, in the money industry. And in fact, it was uh, a technical school adapted to the mining and uh, metal treatment in the, in the in the country. Uh, a lot of Catholic social school like Salama, uh, Cité des Jeunes, uh, uh, giving also uh, skilled workers, but uh, also private school. Uh, and you know, at that time there was Jekamin, we used to give a lot, to inject a lot of money uh, in uh, preparing the label for his mining uh, uh, industry. But uh, it was a state-owned company. Now uh, the major uh, 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 department of the company that used to give a lot of return to the company have been privatized. So the private company are no longer investing in the uh, schooling. Uh, so a lot of uh, school have seen uh, the quality uh, kind of decreasing and no major new school being uh, promoted here. So there's an issue in that regard and uh, a lot of school, technical school that are available in Kinshasa not uh, giving a lot of skill people that can be used in other area of uh, the country. But uh, a lot of Catholic school are still there with a kind of uh, good quality of uh, study. Uh, but this is for high, uh, high school level. University, of course, there are the university, the main 
technical uh, universities are Unidu in the south and uh, in Kinshasa, um, Unikin, um, Kisangani in the east part, but uh, not mainly uh, for technical skills. But uh, there have been small university extension of those big university or new universities like Unicol that uh, a lot of mining companies are supported. Unicol is in Kolwezi. Uh, the major uh, mining companies are supporting and uh, yeah, uh, producing some skill uh, university level um, uh, uh, candidates here to the industry. I don't know if uh, Christian can add to it. Yeah, just uh, quickly, a few, few words. Um, uh, I'm happy that uh, recently we've uh, been granted one billion US dollars for free education. But my main issue is it, uh, the quality of education. You know, DRC is a, it's a big country. So for instance, uh, we, you, you even have different of time. If you are in the Southeast, in Lubumbashi, so uh, Lumbash has the same time than South Africa. If you are in Kinshasa, so <laughs> it's another time. So it, it, it's really big and uh, uh, getting people being educated, it, it's very challenging. So there's a, it, there's a gap in terms of, uh, depending of the field, for instance, you are not spe specializing as a lawyer in mining law in the DRC, you don't have a, a very specific uh, curriculum and program. Uh, we, we, that why we've been amazed by the project in at UCT, the, uh, the, you know, knowledge and different uh, countries and people coming from different countries sharing knowledge. So we need to think about the quality of uh, education and uh, all the system. Again, it's an issue of uh, corruption. Uh, so we need to go through very technical. So one of the things and what I would suggest if I was a Minister of Education, we'd be using actually mining company to the 0.3% and the royalties starting to bring up new school with international best practice and using, you know, all the rent coming from a mining, you know, company or different project to invest in, in on best quality education system. Thank you so much for your answers. We are unfortunately out of time, but I'd like to extend a warm thank you for joining us for the past, um, the past forum as well. Um, and, and this one, it's been very informative and I can see a lot of thank yous from the, from the attendees as well. Um, yes, absolutely brilliant and very informative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.